Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with the Horus Heresy Sola Auxilia Army Box or Battle Group Box. I think it's the third Battle Group Box they brought out, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so the Sola Auxilia are one of, if not my favorite part of the Horus Heresy. As Imperial Guard are my favorite thing in Warhammer 40,000, knowing that there's an entire faction of Imperial Guard in the Horus Heresy was something that I had to grasp at. And I am one of those crazy people who does in fact own a full and complete collection of Sola Auxilia from Forge World. It cost an absolute fortune to buy. And as a result, I was always too afraid to paint it. I did a couple of testers. I was never really happy and it was a very disheartening kind of thing to go through. Now, they have suddenly brought them out now in plastic. To give you an example, I have the new heavy transport in plastic and I have it next to my Forge World resin one in front of me. So that's going to be the first thing that I tackle with this new battle group box is the giant transport. It is an absolute beast of a thing. It has many, many options. You can have a demolisher cannon built into the front of it as a transport which is kind of crazy as goes what scheme i'm going to paint it in that's another thing that i'm not 100 percent sure of it's always been it's always been a struggle for me to try and find examples or things that inspire me with the solo auxilia online as so few people had armies of them like if you go to google images now and type in solo auxilia armies or solo auxilia paint schemes you will find next to nothing to help you get them painted. And that's just truly terrifying. I'm gonna try and remedy that a little bit with this series as I go through and paint up some of the units inside of this box set. I'm going to go for a late heresy siege force. So I want this to be a solo auxiliary army that is defending the walls of Terra from the forces of uh, Horus and all the traitor legions. So that's gonna be the idea. So it's not gonna be a neat and polished look. I'm, I'm gonna say something controversial now. I really dislike the Games Workshop paint scheme that they have gone for with these. That kind of weird dark gray with the gold trim and I, I literally, I hate it. No offense to anyone that has enjoyed and plans to paint theirs that way. Everybody has their own style and everybody likes their own things. That's fine. For me, it's not for me at all. It does not scream a militaristic scheme and that's not something that I'll be leaning on. So I'm going to go for a more, like I said, late heresy style, more weather damaged and beaten style of scheme, something akin to my Krieg. And we'll see how that kind of scheme plays off across a tank like this. And it's a very intricate, very detailed, many angles, many rivets and many places to... It feels like it's going to be something quite difficult to paint. And I'm hoping to dispel your fears in this video. And by the end of this video, have this paint, this tank fully painted and ready for the tabletop. Whether I manage to pull that off or not, only time will tell. If you're excited to see the results, stick around to the end of the video, guys. Okay, this is it in all its glory. It is a beautiful tank. It is basically one for one with the resin one. I did indeed have a resin one next to it after I finished constructing it. Every rivet, every bolt, everything is basically in the same position. This one is just obviously a little bit crisper, a little bit easier to build, and hopefully it will be a little bit cheaper as well. Picking a color scheme for Solo Auxilia has always been something that I struggled with and I had this idea a while ago with my resin ones that I was going to paint up their tanks and equipment the same as my Krieg. Basically as I really like my tank scheme that I have for Krieg and reckoning that most of the tanks can actually be used in my Krieg army as well so why not use them as dual purpose. With that in mind I decided to follow that idea through and paint up this beast of a heavy transport in that color scheme. Obviously, it's just the base color that I'm going to be using, which is the, the fang, the dark blue gray scheme. All the accent color, all the transfers and stuff will be, of course, Sol Auxilia themed to make sure that it fits in with the heresy. With the gray over the black, I just went for a uh, kind of like a really heavy zenithal. A, it got mostly turned to gray, but I made sure that all the kind of cracks and recesses didn't get a heavy coat. So it stayed nice and shaded. Once I move up to the fang color, I'm doing exactly the same thing as the gray, but obviously much more controlled, much slower. As you can see, I am just painting the flat areas of the panels and trying to leave nice and dark lines in the rest of the areas. This will help to add a little bit of interest across the tank. Obviously, if I had just gone across it with one solid coat of blue, it's not going to look very good. It's going to look really flat, really boring. It will end up looking more like a, a toy as opposed to being an awesome miniature of war. The Fang is definitely a colour that I have used quite a lot to paint up tanks. I think there's about 17 or 18 tanks now painted for my Krieg Force and they're all using this particular scheme. 
And as you can see, with the blue applied all over and it dried, it's nice. Now, I wanted to shade it down, add it a little bit dirty and a bit more grungy than that. So what I do at this stage is I grab some Serif from Sepia. And I basically do the reverse of the blue. I'm applying this, but I'm aiming for all the cracks and all the lines and all the, the bits and pieces just to add an extra bit of shading to it. This can be a quick step because we are going to go back in with the fang afterwards to smoothen out those layers and make it pop again. One of the things I wished I had built for this is the dozer blade. I think the front of this tank without the dozer blade is actually quite ugly. And there's not a lot of place to put color or to put interest. So from the side, the tank looks great. I think the back even looks great with the trench rails. But uh, the front of it's a bit weird. Like I said, wish I'd built the dozer blade and painted it up alongside it. I think that's actually going to make a huge difference to the overall silhouette of the tank. But live and learn, I'll, I'll paint it up separately and I'll glue it on after. Here I am going back in with the fang again, obviously being even more careful than the last time I used it. And as you can see, I'm very much hitting very specific armor plates. Ones that are really going to stand out, ones that are going to get a lot of light. And leave the rest nice and dark and in shadow. I really do not like the grey scheme with all of the gold trim that they went for. The majority of tanks they roll in off the production line bare silver and then they get painted one solid coat. And I kind of like that idea of tanks, they're just that one solid coat. But then of course they add insignia and lots of transfers and lots of weathering, lots of dirty to grime that up. So I kind of went with that. Although there is lots of, like I said, rivets and extra bars and stuff that you could easily put gold on or brass on or silver on. It's not exactly the direction that I wanted to go for. Okay, now it's time to, I'm going to call it like nose art or whatever. I don't know what you call it. It's not obviously a nose, not a plane, but whatever the front of the tank is where you tend to put iconography or different regiment symbols or whatever. So a commander can look across the battlefield, see these nose and know exactly what regiment this thing is for. I just uh, taped off the front triangle of the tank and I sprayed it with a light ivory color. I didn't go too crazy or too heavy. I didn't need it to be this like completely solid coat. A little bit of the blue showed through, just a small bit. That still works perfectly as, like I said, this thing is hand painted. After that was dry, I put another line of tape right down the middle of the, the triangle. Basically the cover of the bit that I still wanted to keep that bone color. And then I went in with red, two coats with that, and then I switched to a brighter red and airbrushed in the middle of that as well. Just add a little bit of definition and shade. Now, obviously, you guys can follow along with this kind of technique if you want. I find that the uh, YouTube is actually just abysmal for trying to find any guides to help me paint. So all auxilia and Google Images is not much better. There's just not a lot of stuff out there. I'm hoping with the release of these en masse, when uh, everybody gets their hands on them, we will see some very talented people give me inspiration and help me get the rest of my forces painted. Right now, I'm just very much winging it. I definitely will continue to do all the tanks in this scheme because I've seen their end result. I really like how it looks and it goes with the rest of my kind of forge wool and Kriegy tanks. So I think as a collection of vehicles, it's going to look fantastic. And I am very tempted to test out my Krieg scheme on the infantry as well. I think it might look really good having the, the brown fatigues and the, the kind of bluey armor. Maybe this is the uh, the birthplace of Krieg. Maybe these uh, this was the Sol Auxilia Regiment that hailed from Krieg back in the Heresy era. Who knows? A couple of interesting transfers were applied. I don't actually know what any of these transfers mean. Obviously, we have the, the Grand Expeditionary Fleet transfer on the back. The chapter symbol for seven on the side, indicating that these guys are loyal to the Imperial Fists and have fought alongside them with their Expeditionary Fleet for most of the Great Crusade. And then of course, moving into the siege and the heresy, they uh, were uh, based off of terror themselves and helped to defend the palace. But the front one, the weird triangle thing, it looks like uh, the symbol of the Deathly Hallows or something, I have, no, I have no idea. I did go in with a bit of Iron Warrior steel and I did paint a couple of rivets and a couple of little extra bits, some pipe work and stuff, just to break it up a little bit. Nothing too crazy. As you can see, the front quite boring, sides and back quite interesting, front not great. After that, we jumped up to Lead Belcher, which is a slightly brighter but still quite dark silver. And this is where we're going to add chipping and weathering to the entire tank. So we're going to dry brush over everything. 
So lightly over the entire hull, and then I dry brush a little bit heavier on tracks. I know tracks can be a pain in the backside to paint. Trust me, I know that. If you go in and try and paint every little bit, it can be a pain in the back. But look how quickly I'm going to paint up the tracks on this thing. I'm using this same brush to basically gonna heavily dry brush up the tracks, getting in around the sides and the back. It works a treat. It's super fast and effective. And I really do like the result. You can see what the light silver dry brush is doing to that side of the tank. It's making all the details pop, bring them all to the forefront. Like I've spent a lot of time with every single rivet, which I have absolutely not. A little bit of sponge weathering. I grabbed some black paint and I sponged that on as well over transfers and over the flatter parts of the hull. Just add a little bit more chipping. I went back in again after that with a little bit of silver and did the same thing. Once again, this is just to indicate small arms fire or shrapnel or something has pinged off the hull of this thing as it has been was trundling forward with its deadly cargo of solar auxilia soldiers so far so good i'm really liking how this is turning out now i personally love adding weathering powder to my creed tanks a couple of people have commented in videos sometimes i got overboard with these and i know they're not for everybody so obviously you can stop right here and call this tank finished totally up to you no big deal I personally am going to go in with the Humbrol Dark Rust Weathering Powder and I'm going to apply that to places where dust and stuff would have settled. Remembering my Sol Auxilia Force is going to be based on the Siege of Terra. They are loyalists dug in and defending against Horus and all the traitor legions. Therefore, they're going to be around constant explosions and lots of firepower. There's no way these things are going to be pristine or clean. So I add the Dark Weathering Powder into all the places where I think that kind of dust and dirt would settle. After I did this, I then adhere it to the tank by spraying it with Minotaur varnish. And after that, this is the final result of my first heavy transport and first solo auxilia tank that I have ever successfully painted. I'm super pleased with the result, apart from the missing dozer blade. We'll, we'll add that after. But I think it looks really cool. Hope you guys like how it turned out. If you did, I'd love to know your opinions personally and if you think i should change anything or do anything different in the future i would love to know and as you can see this is what it will actually look like on the tabletop i think it's a pretty nice scheme i wonder will you guys bully me and make me do the heavy sentinel next try and get over my i'm not sure if loathing is the right word but loathing of that that particular kit Okay, well, after a day of painting, I indeed have my first heavy transport for Sola Auxilia painted up. And I must say it was actually more enjoyable than I thought. Um, I think I just let the price of the old resin ones get into my head, the idea of kind of wrecking them, or if I made a mistake, it wasn't as easy to go back and repaint them or retouch them up. So perhaps that was one of the main things that stopped me back in the day from getting these particular pieces painted. There's definitely a lot more freedom when it comes to the plastics. But like I said, I really enjoyed painting it up. I went for basically my Krieg color scheme as, a, as the core of it, that really dark blue, I think really works well for that kind of militaristic, but still quite science fiction-y color scheme. But then obviously the nose art of it got done differently with the red and white and then heresy insignia put all around it. I put seven symbols on mine as I am seventh legion fan. So they will obviously be paired up with my imperial fists and uh, fight together. I hope you enjoyed this video. Obviously it was quite a bit different. I do indeed have the box set as the first thing out for Soul Auxilia. And if you want to see more things from this box set painted up on the channel, please do let me know. There's a command squad, 20 basic infantry, a Lehman Rust, which is beautiful, and a heavy sentinel. Me personally, something that I would kind of like to challenge myself on is the heavy sentinel. I would quite like to do a video on that because honestly, I hate it right now. I, it's one of the, it's very few models out there that get released and they just aren't for me. And that heavy sentinel design just does nothing for me. I would love to know what your guys' feelings are on that. Um, and I'm wondering if the process of putting one together and getting it painted up kind of changes my mind. Maybe I love it afterwards. I don't know, that tends to happen sometimes when you put a lot of time and effort into something. If you enjoyed this video, please do let me know by giving the video a like. Ask me any questions you want in the comments, including letting me know which units you want to see from Solid Auxilia painted up. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I am actually doing a Titan giveaway this year. 2024 is the year of the Titan for me. At the end of this year, I want to give away a Titan. And the Titan I give away is dependent on how many subscribers I get to. If I get to 65,000 subscribers, I will give away a Warhound 
85,000 subscribers, I will give away a Reaver. And if I get to 100,000 subscribers, I will give away a Warlord Titan. The only thing you need to do to be on the chance of winning is subscribe. Okay, thank you for sticking around at the end of this video. I'll see you in the next one.